Okay, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, I am a, an engineer, mechanical engineer, and uh, I was pleased to see that there are several engineers here, uh, so I feel at home here. <laughs> uh, I never gave up my profession. I am still a practicing engineer. Uh, I serve as a consultant uh, in, in the energy field. Uh, and, um, but uh, I developed an interest in the philosophy of science, and uh, I wrote a lot of papers recently. Uh, published in reputable journals there. And today I will share some of my thoughts regarding uh, science, uh, philosophy, uh, belief, uh, other things, uh, dim uh, dimensions of uh, existence. Um, hopefully it will uh, uh, promote some kind of different kind of thinking. And uh, I would like also to, to get your uh, thoughts on that one. These are some of the publications. Uh, some recent publications, and uh, I use some material from those publications uh, there. Uh, and uh, this is my view of science, philosophy, worldview, belief, how they fit. Uh, uh, just to, to develop some uh, terminology here. Yeah, science is based on observations of the visible physical world, so it is very limited. Uh, and. Uh, it can be uh, reputed, uh, confirmed, uh, whatever, based on uh, experimentations, observations, uh, whatever. And scientific knowledge is epistem uh, epistemologically objective. Uh, that is, if I say uh, this is, you know, uh, uh, what? A notebook, you all can see, you will agree this is a notebook. So uh, not nothing uh, thing to discuss here. Uh, and then philosophy is, uh, it is based on recent uh, arguments of the invisible, non-physical world of ideas, thoughts, whatever. So it is uh, epistemologically subjective from our perspective. And then worldview belief is, it is really your subscription and conviction to certain thoughts, uh, opinions. Uh, that is, uh, you may agree, disagree, choose something, choose something else. So it is uh, how I view these uh, different uh, concepts here. Uh, and the science and philosophy, uh, they are out there. There are a lot of uh, commonalities. Uh, and uh, belief is, uh, and the way they combine is it is in our mind. Uh, so out there, they may be at different places, but in our mind, we combine um, everything. And I will use uh, Einstein's example, again, to make the distinction between uh, science, uh, philosophy, and belief. Einstein gives uh, this example of a uh, watch here. And he says everyone can see the face, uh, the numbers, uh, and they can hear the ticks. Uh, but of course, we cannot uh, anymore. And uh, this is the science part. That is, uh, we see it, uh, we uh, what, uh, agree with it because we all share the same uh, experience here. It is uh, objective knowledge there. Uh, and then uh, if you have the question, OK, what is the mechanism that makes this clock work? What is the hidden mechanism? And we cannot open the watch. Uh, then you know uh, the disagreements will begin. We will, we will come up with a lot of different models, different uh, ideas, different uh, uh, what uh, thoughts really, and uh, uh, we, uh, we cannot, we, we don't have to agree on a certain inner picture there. So this is the philosophical part because it's invisible. Uh, so we will have disagreements uh, from that, and then out of those models proposed, the one that we choose and we subscribe to, uh, and uh, we think it is the correct one, it is our preference, it is our uh, belief there. So uh, yeah, they, they kind of fit nicely you know, science, uh, philosophy, and uh, belief there. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a philosophy of science uh, presentation. And uh, obviously, you cannot observe <laughs> the uh, thoughts here. Uh, the, the, the tools that we will be using, logical consistency, uh, compliance with reason. So we will ask the question, is it reasonable? Is it ra logical? Is it rational? And it uh, doesn't confirm with uh, observations. Is it uh, coherent within itself? And does it exist? Uh, does it agree with the existing body of correct knowledge, whatever that is? And we will use uh, 
just like other things like you know thought experiments, analogy, uh, case studies, uh, whatever there. So let's start with the physical realm. I'll, I want to set the, I think, basic understanding straight, because if things are clear to begin with, then we can have more meaningful uh, discussions or uh, arguments there. So material beings, uh, my, or physical things, uh, I, my simple uh, definition is, uh, you know the periodic table, uh, it is from high school, and the material things are made of these. It's a combination. It may have some of this, some of that, or just stand alone, the elements. But of course, they are not the fundamental elements. Uh, they are made of uh, uh, atoms there, and uh, the atoms are made of particles. So this is, these are, this is the, in physics, the most elementary particles. I will not go through them. Uh, uh, here, uh, we think they are the more, most fundamental, and this is the list we have right now. In the future, we may have more, and some of the fundamental ones may turn out to be really uh, composite ones. Uh, so that's also part of the uh, game here. But if, let's say, uh, an entity has at least one of these, okay, this is the base of physics, and they correspond to quantum fields there, then that thing is physical. And if it doesn't have any of these, whether it is a photon, whether it is uh, what, an electron or something, then it is non-physical. So this is how I define the physical uh, things here. So very clear distinction. Uh, and also uh, the realm of existence, again, uh, I make the distinction, the physical realm there and the non-physical. Uh, the physical things, you know, the light, television, our bodies, car, brain, whatever, all physical, uh, because they have electrons, protons, a lot of things. And the things that don't have any of the fundamental uh, particles, uh, they are non-physical. Let's say our dreams, consciousness. Interestingly, in thermodynamics, we use a lot of uh, entropy, okay? And I'm sure you also have a lot of discussions on that one. And you may think it is part of physics, it is not. Mm, entropy, uh, what, can be created out of nothing. So it is not really physical, it is not made of energy, it is not made of uh, particles there. So uh, the science of thermodynamics, at, at least half of it is based on something non-physical. Uh, Space-time, which is really the base of physics, it is non-physical, okay? Uh, the time is non-physical, uh, space, same way. Uh, it is not made of physics. Uh, quantum fields the same way, so the mother of physics is really non-physics. Uh, so they are not really foreign concepts uh, to us. Or the laws of physics themselves, the math, again non-physical. Uh, therefore, just the kind of the materialistic ideology or materialistic worldview doesn't really hold any, any, any water there. That is, a lot of things that we think is physics is really not physics. Yeah. That's an interesting way of putting it. So why have you put mathematics and the law of physics outside of the physical world? Because the mathematics is not made of electrons, photons, or what. It is non-physical. It is a mental construct, yes. uh, mathematics. It is non-physical. If there were no people, okay, there would be no mathematics. Although you would still have you know, rocks, trees, or uh, whatever. It is the uh, same with the uh, laws of physics, okay? Like uh, the law of gravity, yeah, we know it is there. Uh, but <laughs> can you show it to me? No, it is again, uh, what, mental constructs there. Uh, kind of discover the things there, but they are, they are non-physical. Uh, and <clears throat> even, let's say, the elements themselves, okay? Uh, for example, all the properties, all the physical things, they are also non-physical. Uh, so what I'm trying to show here, is, you know, uh, we, we kind of think that you know, science is better, hardcore physics, you know, the things you can touch on, it is not that way. That is, most of physics uh, is really, uh, really non-material things, non-energy things. But somehow, somehow we mix them or in, in a certain way that uh, we think they are material or energy. Uh, for example, carbon. It has like you know, six uh, uh, atoms there and uh, iron uh, in the core, uh, 26, I mean, uh, uh, six protons, uh, 26 protons, and the gold, 79 uh, protons, okay? No, no other difference. Okay, then the question, if I ask you, can you turn carbon into gold? Let's say take the coal, get the carbon out of it. Can you make gold out of it? Okay, technology we cannot, we cannot make, but conceptually, can you really make it? I mean, can technology come to that level? Is there any? At some point, at some point, why not? Exactly, exactly. Uh, that is uh, that, that you know black carbon can be turned into gold. 
Why? Because all the protons are the same. Okay? The uh, coal, I mean, the carbon has six, gold has 79. Just, you know, rip them apart and put them together in about piles of 79, combine them, you can turn the carbon to gold. <laughs> okay, why don't you do it? I don't know how to do it. It is, it is a matter of technology, <laughs> okay? Uh, but look at, the, uh, look at the, I think, uh, the arguments there okay, uh, to appreciate the properties. Uh, let's say carbon, it has six protons, right? Uh, it, it comes with a set of properties which kind of emerge on those six protons. And 79 order you combine properties of gold, just one proton, which is hydrogen, the properties of hydrogen. So properties have nothing to do, nothing to do with the constituents of the uh, um, what elements here. Uh, that is a proton is proton, right? It has a certain property. Look at it this way, let's say, uh, uh, let's say grains of rice. One rice has, you know, rice properties. Okay, get, let's say, six, uh, what, six rice, okay? Tie them uh, tightly, <coughs> okay? It is still six grains of rice, mm -hmm. rice properties. But here, let's say, when you do that, you get carbon properties. Instead of hydrogen, you get carbon. Tie, you know, 79 of them, instead of a big, let's say, uh, something, okay? You get gold. Uh, let's say, if you, uh, uh, tightly wrap a few uh, rice grains, it doesn't turn into hazelnut. That would be amazing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but this is really what's happening. So the properties uh, come from outside. Properties are non-physical. <laughs> okay? um, therefore, uh, all the physical things, this is my diamond uh, theory, okay? uh, all the physical things are actually a mix of physics and non-physics or metaphysics, by their nature. It is not like you know, we are forcing them to mix because they have properties, uh, okay? Uh, and those properties are non-physical, just like the diamond. Uh, what makes the diamond really a diamond is, it has the carbon base there, which is a material, and then it uh, takes in the light and reflects it. So that combination of light, which is non-material, but still physical, it is our energy, uh, combination of light, which reflects off it, and the material diamond, it is what we call the uh, diamond there, okay? But it is, you know, a mix of material and non-material things there. So every physical thing, including the electron, it, it comes with a set of, you know, properties, or proton or something, whatever, okay? It's a combination. So matter and meaning, or physics and uh, non-physics, it's a combination there. Uh, therefore, uh, non-physics or uh, metaphysics is not really foreign to uh, physical science, it is part of it. But somehow, you know, we don't perceive it uh, that way. Uh, and uh, this is not uh, only me saying and all those things. Uh, and uh, uh, the emergence theories, they are well recognized, uh, okay? And uh, all the properties are believed to be emerging. Once they say, you bring, for example, hydrogen and oxygen, uh, oxygen to form water, okay? Then the water properties just emerge on that combination, okay? Uh, from out of uh, nowhere. Uh, it doesn't come from the constituents uh, uh, from there because uh, the properties here have nothing to do with uh, hydrogen and uh, oxygen. Uh, and uh, here Robert Laughlin uh, also says that the laws of physics also emerge, okay? Uh, I don't quite agree with that. I'll discuss that later on. The laws of physics, they are not, you know, part of physics really. It is not the carcass of the universe, the material things or the energy, uh, because they are made of, you know, electrons, protons, whatever, or, you know, photons, uh, whatever, okay, energy things. Uh, there is something completely different, completely different, uh, which kind of governs the physical things there, okay? And the laws of physics are that way, and that governing is done uh, through the forces of physics. Again, forces are not made of electrons, protons, or something. Uh, so you can, they are influences. And although they are physics in a sense, but they are not really physical. Okay, the forces there. They are not, you know, made of uh, matter energy there. So if you look at the existence that way, even the physics itself almost becoming really mostly non-physics. Okay, uh, on laws of nature, or laws of uh, physics, to be more specific there, uh, okay? 
Uh, first of all, if there is a, a law, that means there is a will. Okay? There is a will. So there is a universal will uh, which is uh, what? Affecting every, everything in the universe uh, and ruling the universe because everything, everything moves or does things in accordance with the laws of physics. Uh, you cannot violate them. Now, okay, like conservation of mass, energy, let's say gravity, other things, uh, whatever that. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously that will dimension is very different than the passive matter uh, energy. So there is something, a higher level of existence, which is some will uh, reflected or manifested as certain principles, rules. They are the laws of physics there. Uh, and uh, it kind of, you know, governs the material uh, realm there. Uh, and uh, it doesn't come, the laws of physics and force, it doesn't come from the matter itself. Uh, let's say uh, matter uh, attracts each other, right? The gravity. Uh, and what is the source of it? Where in the matter is that, you know, pulling thing? It is nowhere. It is not there. Okay? It doesn't have to do that. Electrons, let's say, two of them will repel each other. Uh, in the center of the uh, what, uh, uh, what nucleus of the uh, atom there. Uh, we have, let's say, the hard force holding the protons uh, together, uh, whatever. Uh, and the laws of physics are not selective. Okay? They cannot, let's say, pull you a lot and pull me a little bit, ignore the other one. They cannot do that. Universal. No purpose. Question? Yeah, hocam, just so can we say, like, very simply, for example, we have two eyes, right? All human beings have two eyes. So this is a law, right? So who decides that law? Why we don't have three and just two? So it's the same thing? Uh, yeah. OK, now, there is obviously, behind the scenes, a will. OK? And that whoever has that will, OK, uh, you may say it is God, or you may say I'm not interested. But it is you know, obvious that there is a will imposed on the material things. OK? It is like, imagine, let's say, you just came to the world, and let's say, uh, uh, you are driving and people are stopping, let's say, at the red light. Then, you know, you see, look at it a few times, then you realize that there is a rule here. Okay? It is imposed. It, is, it doesn't come from the cars or drivers. Imposed on them. Because they are obeying. Okay, we can violate them as human beings. But the matter energy cannot violate them. Okay? Uh, so, uh, obviously, there is the matter energy and then a higher level of existence, which is a will. Okay. It, uh, then uh, an entity, entity uh, which has a will uh, in the asthma, it will be like you read, okay, irade, uh, and then that will somehow manifests on matter this way, kind of you know governs it, okay, like a, a spirit. Um, yeah. So what you're trying to say is, if you look at it from the a purely uh, secular perspective, they call it nature. Right? Mm -hmm. They call it the rules of nature. Mm -hmm. Laws of nature or laws of physics, yes. Correct. Rules of nature. But from an Islamic perspective, they say it is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So yes. Surely that's the, that's the real Yes, rules, exactly. Right? They are equivalent. And uh, I'll come to that uh, in, the, in the next slide. So here, let's say, uh, they have no consciousness. They don't know what they are doing, the laws of physics. Uh, and they have no purpose, no knowledge, no power. Uh, and they don't care about, let's say, the hikmah, the usefulness. Uh, and they have no sense of uh, aesthetics or art. OK? And they simply rule. Uh, so uh, Einstein, for example, said uh, it is a, uh, a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe. Uh, because let's say, imagine uh, I am dead. My body just sits there. OK? And we need a spirit to really move it around. I am alive, and I can do a lot of things. Uh, but if I lose my soul or spirit, okay, then I am a chunk of matter. So it looks like he uses an anal analogy. It is the spirit, the laws and forces of uh, physics. Right? And Montaparte says, uh, natural laws are the invisible government of the Earth. Uh, I think a better description is really uh, constitution, uh, okay, because uh, the world is ruled in accordance with them, in compliance uh, with them. And Nursi uh, says, nature is a grand divine law that arranges and governs the behavior of the elements and the organs of the body of creation called the visible realm. Uh, that is the laws of nature. 
uh, it is, let's say, the first line that uh, we see. And then uh, we can say that the, uh, what science discovers, the, all these uh, principles, okay? That is the constitution of the universe. Uh, these are the, look at it as a rule book. Uh, and uh, the, in the physical realm, those rules cannot be violated. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have science. You have to have something, you know, in orderly manner, and they have to be, you know, uh, they should repeat each other. And any time, let's say, you do an experiment, you should get the same result. If let's say, it is not that way, then you don't have any order, you don't have any rule, you, you cannot have any science. So that uh, the existence of science is uh, evidence of existence of an order in the universe, and which points out to the uh, to an orderer. Okay, the one who, let's say, uh, makes that order there. Uh, and uh, uh, Nursi uh, also kind of combines this, the nature, laws of nature, uh, whatever, and he calls them, he doesn't uh, you know, argue with them, he doesn't deny them or anything. Uh, he says uh, it is the grand divine law of creation, the, all the laws of physics. Uh, and uh, I also take the all laws of physics and the forces of physics I label them as uh, the agency of physics. That is the thing, the effect or the agency which kind of governs the inanimate uh, realm there. In living beings, we have another set of laws there. So he calls them like the regulations of God, customer acts of God, creational laws, divine laws, uh, sharia of creation, uh, whatever. Uh, and uh, he says like God Almighty made the particles that form uh, the universe obedient to his laws of creation and uh, submissive and super, uh, subservient to his creational commands. Mm -hmm. So this way, I think what Nursi does, I think what we are trying to do here, uh, takes less of what science offers, uh, kind of all the discoveries, uh, laws of physics, uh, all those things, uh, okay, uh, and the uh, uh, forces there, and simply puts it into a proper perspective, uh, saying that, uh, it is not like, you know, it is a secular thing or something. Uh, these exist and actually they are, uh, they are sunnetullah, adetullah, uh, whatever. So what they call, you know, laws of uh, physics, uh, you can look at it there, uh, for example, as laws of creation by, imposed on by, uh, let's say, the creator. Uh, this way you don't lose anything from science part and simply you properly kind of uh, place it, which is consistent uh, with the, uh, belief that. Or if you don't care, you don't care. <laughs> there is nothing uh, anyone uh, can do that. And uh, uh, there are a lot of things said about size, but to be fair, I think the American so uh, physical society's definition is, uh, I think, uh, very correct here. I agree with that. It says science is a systematic enterprise of gathering knowledge about the universe and organizing and condensing that knowledge into testable laws and theories. Physics or science is really this. And then, you know, we involved, uh, we did ideologies, this and that, and it becomes something else. So that is the problem. Mm -hmm. So science is, I think, I mean, science. That is, uh, you simply discover. You simply, you know, uh, based on observations, testing, you simply try to uh, unearth the underlying, underpinning rules, principles, whatever, and simply express it. And then it is open to testing, to uh, what? Uh, for example, uh, they can be proven wrong or something. Uh, but this is really science. Science does not involve any ideology or anything. And science does not uh, work on non-physical things. Its domain of inquiry is physical world. For example, uh, does God exist? Okay? This is not the subject of science. As a scientist, if I say something, it is my belief or my opinion. It is not like, okay, the scientist, blah, blah, says this, fine. But science says this, no. Science cannot speak about, about God or angels or hereafter or uh, whatever. Uh, therefore, really what we call the, the physical realm, which is the what, uh, uh, domain of inquiry of sciences, is really what you see as a triangle. That is the carcass is the matter energy, okay? Uh, physical thing, we can sense it, we can observe it, we can measure it or whatever. It is, I think, we can say purely physical. And then we have uh, properties because we have nothing physical without a set of properties. They are emergent, therefore non-physical. And then we have the laws and forces of nature uh, or physics, okay, uh, it is an agency. 
again, not physical. Therefore, two out of three components of the physical realm is really not physical. So, uh, so uh, let's say if a physicist says, you know, uh, about non-physical things, you know, uh, I don't care, or it is beyond, the, no, they are using it, but they don't know it. Uh, that is, physics is actually mostly non-physical. Uh, somehow, you know, uh, we don't <laughs> see it that or many, many of us. And uh, the uh, the conclusion there uh, is the tapestry of physical realm is woven out of threads of matter energy, which is physical, properties, non-physical, and the laws and forces of physics, which are again non-physical. Uh, so this is putting things into proper perspective. And uh, of course, the uh, problem that we have uh, with the laws of physics uh, is that we invent something like you know nature, mother nature, or uh, uh, whatever. Okay, and then I think uh, as you said, uh, mother nature does everything. We kind of you know associate an agency with it, agency which has intent and then which has uh, uh, I don't know knowledge, uh, power, selective, all those things. Okay, which are really hypothetical. They, it is nonsense. Uh, there is no such thing, and it is not part of science. It cannot be part of science. Uh, no one, no scientist, can say, "Oh, yeah, I discovered you know mother nature." It's also interesting. We don't have father nature. It is you know mother nature because uh, people see. I think uh, in nature, they can even see the reflections of the compassion there. Okay, and compassion is associated with I think uh, mothers. Uh, therefore, the nature is so compassionate, you know, it gives us everything we need, kind of personalized uh, that way. Uh, but of course, it is not uh, scientific at all then. Uh, and uh, the nature of the laws and force of nature, uh, or physics, is that, first of all, they are blind. They are deaf, lifeless, ignorant, mindless, whatever you call it, okay? Uh, they are not like, you know, some knowledgeable uh, agent there. Uh, and uh, uh, if you look at the natural phenomena, okay, uh, what, the, what, are, what are the effects which can be traced to uh, the matter energy and the forces? For example, rain, floods, uh, thunders, wind, uh, erosion, earthquake, hot, cold uh, feeling, uh, expansion, I don't know, interaction, chemical reactions, uh, whatever. And what are the acts of nature that we see directly from the nature, but we don't really um, not human involvement there. Uh, the result is like irregularly shaped rocks, stones, uh, soils, hills, you know, or whatever. That is, uh, when we see those, we don't say a person or something uh, uh, like, a, like, like a human being uh, did that. Uh, and uh, this uh, idealization of laws and forces of physics, it looks like every, everything obeys to this, then kind of gave rise to the idea that, ah, you know, maybe. Uh, okay, uh, let's not deny God. God, okay, created the laws and forces of nature, put the rules together, and started the uh, what, universe, and it just go keeps going. So the, the thought of you know, uh, deism here, so it is not you know, denial of God, but kind of you know, pacifying God, like it is no longer relevant. So the universe runs by uh, itself here. Uh, okay? Uh, and we have this uh, clock analogy, like you know, we set the clock, and then it just, you know, runs. If there is no friction, it will run forever. Uh, of course, this is very simplistic because the universe is anything but a uh, what a clock. It has, you know, a very simple uh, motion there. If you look at the reality, for example, look at those birds, other things, or ourselves, there is continual change. That is, um, uh, today is not the same as tomorrow. It is not like, you know, same clock uh, ticking that way. And uh, obviously, there is a lot of sophistication here, a lot of art a lot of uh, change, uh, so that is not a realistic model there. Uh, and uh, uh, what also we see is everything in the universe, okay, especially the living beings, they are made with a uh, purpose, knowledge, and art. Uh, no matter uh, where you look at it, you, are, you will see this. And then things are very dynamic. There is a purpose and utility observed, and uh, there is, I think, a lot of art there. But the laws of nature, they have no purpose, uh, okay, no will, uh, they cannot do any preference, no knowledge, no, no sense of art, no utility. And the result uh, here is that uh, 
the claim that creation is the making of the laws of nature, everything we see, including ourselves, okay? It is not really uh, plausible there. And uh, to give an example, let's uh, look at that chemical factory, okay? Uh, for example, what is the possibility of that factory being formed, uh, uh, let's say, as the making of the laws and forces of physics? It is zero, right? This will never happen. Well, look at that piece of uh, a leaf uh, on the left, but it is really uh, also a chemical factory. Uh, what happens there uh, is uh, you take the sunlight, Okay, you take uh, water, uh, carbon dioxide, right? And then you convert that uh, solar energy into chemical energy. And then we can even, let's say, turn it into fuel and run uh, our cars with that fuel. That is, the cars will run, run with uh, uh, what? water. But if, let's say, that chemical factory, you cannot be making the making of laws and forces of uh, what, uh, physics or nature, okay? Obviously, that cannot do. Uh, and these are continual. They are, you know, destroyed, new, no, new ones are built, uh, whatever. Uh, therefore, the thought of uh, deism is really, or just limiting existence to physics, is not uh, plausible. Uh, and uh, let me also take this opportunity to, to tell the difference between science and technology as an uh, engineer. Uh, science deals with the natural things, meaning non-human involvement. You don't have anything to do with it. Let's say photosynthesis, it is not man-made, it is discovered. And then if, let's say, right now we are working on uh, doing the same thing, what the, what the leaves do. Take the solar energy, the carbon dioxide, uh, water, and convert them into chemical energy. Of course, we are, we, we are doing that, but we are not very efficient. If, let's say, you do this, it is a technology. And uh, if it is a technology, uh, okay, obviously it is science, what we learn, plus the human uh, ingenuity uh, here. Uh, and we know that. If, let's say, we achieve it, uh, as you see here, okay, uh, Kando converts sunlight, carbon dioxide, water into chemical energy, okay, there is a team of engineers behind it mm -hmm. uh, with will, purpose, knowledge, and power or skill set, okay? Uh, so these are essential. Such a, such a device will not happen even if you wait a billion years. Uh, therefore, this, uh, that uh, leaf, the natural thing, kind of doing the same thing. Obviously, we must have the same things behind those. Uh, and um, somehow, you know, uh, our main problem is we develop a blind spot because uh, we see things so much that uh, the extraordinary things become uh, what? Ordinary. For example, uh, uh, what you see here, okay, these are, these are uh, what? Man-made at the bottom here, okay? Uh, let's say you can even, you can walk in Istanbul, you will see things that are done by Romans. And no one questions that, uh, what you see at the bottom. Uh, these are made by people. Because their intent, okay, because it is not irregular, there is a regularity there, uh, there is art there, uh, and uh, there is some knowledge, you know, power, or whatever. And they are very simple, yet, but no one will claim that they are the result of natural events, you know, rain, I don't know, wind, and they somehow got together, and no one will say that. Yet, we have the same things on the top, okay? A million times, you know, more miraculous than what is at the bottom. We say, oh, what, well, you know, nature makes it. You know, what is the big deal here, all right? So this is, I think, the dilemma that we have, that is, we don't really think, okay? Um, and uh, same, let's say, goes uh, here, okay? Uh, when you show that, you know, wooden uh, rooster there, no one will think that, you know, the natural causes, uh, the laws, uh, forces of physics will simply be, uh, what, behind it. Uh, because it is obviously, you know, uh, something skillful uh, with knowledge, with intent, uh, whatever. But we have the live rooster and no one asks that question. Uh, we can say, you know, just nature or mother nature, whatever. So what, what, is, uh, what is to think here? It is the nature. But as you said, you know, okay, who is that nature? Okay, let me meet him, <laughs> right? Uh, and uh, so we have this, uh, I think, delusion. And then maybe some sleeping uh, state there. And uh, uh, here, uh, for example, the laws of nature, we know that are collection of rules and principles, okay? Uh, 
and it is very clear there. But uh, sometimes it is perceived as a uh, some you know divine being, uh, a deity there that sees and knows everything and is able to do anything, because it is done through uh, the laws and forces of physics somehow. We don't kind of think uh, beyond. So this is just like you know traffic laws and rules. The rules themselves, you can have the best traffic rules, they will not do anything. Unless there is, you know, uh, some uh, policeman enforcing the rules, some government or uh, whatever that. Uh, the, write the best laws of, uh, you know, traffic, and then, you know, say, these laws will govern the traffic. Doesn't happen. They don't have any power, uh, uh, any what, uh, implementation or uh, whatever that. Uh, and uh, so deism is, I think, uh, I think everyone agrees that it is not a you know a really plausible idea there. So there has been some change. For example, they said, well, uh, how about let's say uh, pantheism? So let's involve God. So God is uh, everything. Everything is God. Still, you know, deny a divine entity there. Kind of combine them. Mm, that didn't hold much water either. Okay, let's improve it. Uh, panentheism. Uh, it is like a pantheism plus a spirit with purpose, knowledge, skill. Because they can, they cannot be denied that you know uh, purpose, knowledge, uh, skill. There, uh, still you know kind of uh, uh, not admitting a personal God with a lot of other uh, attributes there. And uh, to show again the uh, difference about the natural things uh, and uh, things that are made with purpose, knowledge, skill, in Cappadocia, if let's say you have a chance to visit uh, in Turkey and many places in the world. If you see those are formations outside, uh, you can attribute them to the uh, what natural effects. The rain, wind, I don't know, whatever. Because there is no regularity, there is no usefulness, apparently. Uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, irregular, uh, whatever. So things uh, can happen that way. But uh, underneath, we have uh, homes there, several floors in the ground. And if you look at, let's say, inside, well, you know, there are columns, there are paintings, uh, doors, I don't know, rooms, stairs, whatever. When you see them, no one says these are the result of just natural things. Because uh, in the natural case, we have a cave, irregular, this and that. If, let's say, you have those, here, there you see the intent, okay, the knowledge, the skill, and the ability uh, to do it. So this is what the laws and forces of nature can do, okay, just, you know, what you see there. You know, hills, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, whatever there. And uh, if, let's say, you look at the left picture, uh, OK, you can attribute them to, let's say, natural causes. OK, those stones are irregular on the left or uh, whatever. But if, let's say, uh, just look at that needle, just one needle, OK, which is a piece of, let's say, iron. Uh, on one side, it has a hole. The other side is sharp, OK? No one will claim that it is the result of natural effects. Everyone will agree that that is done with intent, with uh, knowledge, with skill, and with power. And no one will object that we take it, put it uh, into a museum. So archaeology, archaeology is really a witness uh, that even a needle, even a needle cannot be formed by the laws and forces of nature. And no one objects to this. I mean, no one questions the validity of archaeology. Now you can kind of generalize it. If let's say a needle, even if you wait a billion years, even if, even if a needle cannot be formed by the laws and forces of physics, OK, then I don't need to say anything else. So the, the entire humanity, I think, agrees that even a needle cannot be formed. OK? Uh, so then there must be. There must be, behind the scenes, uh, some intent, purpose, will, whatever you call knowledge, uh, skill, and ability to do with uh, whatever. OK, if a needle cannot be formed, what can you say about a you know, sewing machine? Uh, I think it is really an illusion. They say, OK, now if you waited long enough, we get a needle. And then another piece will form, and then this, this, and then Somehow they get together, we have a sewing machine. Okay? If you wait, let's say, long enough. If you wait, you know, a, a billion years, that sewing machine will never happen. Forget that, even a needle will never happen. Uh, I think uh, uh, because the 
what is in the arsenal of the physics, uh, which is matter energy properties and laws and force of physics, they don't have what it takes to make a simple needle. So uh, coincidence, I think, obviously uh, does not work here. Uh, same, let's say, with the, with the iPhone. Okay, let's say put all the pieces there and then wait them to assemble into an iPhone in a working order. Again, that doesn't happen. That uh, will not happen. If let's say someone goes to the moon and finds an finds an iPhone there, no one will say that. Well, you know, eventually this evolved. It has you know the same materials here. Everyone will say the astronauts, okay, who came before us, they 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 dropped their iPhone. <laughs> Another, uh, uh, I think, a logical explanation there. Evolution, like the similarity of evolution theory, for example, they are like agreeing that everything is um, changing constantly, right? So, uh, evolute, um, so like you know, transformed in a way from from a form and another form, right? Uh, but maybe we can say the same thing for the iPhone as well. Yes. It is changed and transformed from iPhone uh, 5 to iPhone Pro uh, 14, right? But we don't claim that changing and transformation is happened by itself. Yes. So I think the main problem about the theory of evolution yes. and also the you know claiming towards kind of an attack towards Islam, or you don't uh, agree with the change uh, happening in the whole universe, so you have to accept the theory of evolution. But the thing is not to deny the transformation, and uh, maybe in evolution in that way, but the thing is to give it to the natural forces and just you know, deny the creator of iPhone, yeah. right? Exactly. It is like, let's say we have uh, iPhone 1 and iPhone what, 14, the latest one. So let's say put them together, and you can kind of see the resemblance. Oh, you know, this is improved, okay, this is uh, this, this, this. Here, the problem is, if you think the natural causes somehow, you know, kind of affected iPhone 1 to turn into iPhone 2, okay? That is a delusion. We know that anytime you go from iPhone 1 to iPhone 2, behind the scenes, there is an army of engineers. There is an army of engineers. They want what, to, uh, they know what to do, how to do it, uh, whatever. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, the question, let's say, did they start from iPhone 1 to the iPhone 2, or is it, let's say, from the scratch? I don't care. All I know is, uh, whatever they decide is fine. All I care is, iPhone 1 cannot turn into iPhone 2, okay, something you know, more perfect, uh, under the influence of natural causes uh, and natural, let's say, forces and uh, laws there. So th th there is no such thing. So it is the illusion. Natural causes for the case of iPhone are the materials of iPhone, right? Again? Actually, the natural co causes that we use for the universe in the case of iPhone is the materials inside of the iPhone. So it's kind of like claiming the materials of inside of iPhone are making the iPhone evolved, like transformed from one form in another form. So there's no creator behind the iPhone or designer behind the iPhone. Yeah, I think that the problem there is that notion that kind of they try to use it uh, in order to deny the existence yeah. of that. Yeah. Okay, but that's even the first iPhone. Okay, just to have the first iPhone dash. It is really, again, a needle cannot form by itself, even if you wait a billion years. Okay, so the first iPhone, for example. Yeah, no, no, no chance. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at it from two things. I don't think even the person who is who's an atheist will deny the fact that there is the laws of nature. Mm -hmm. They all they cannot. I mean, of course. Right? Of course. The biggest problem is today is actually the theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. And that is really where we need to go after, right? If you want to be basically expose them, mm -hmm. right? Because they, they, they agree to the laws of nature. They have to. Yeah. They don't have an option. Exactly. The real, real thing where they start lying and they make up this thing is evolution. So we need to really equip ourselves to go after that whole theory of evolution and disintegrate it. Once we get that, it's game over for them. Mm -hmm. Really, that's really where I feel is where our focus is to go after the theory of evolution and just make it show how impossible it is with facts. Yeah. Just like what you're stating right now, right? Mm -hmm. They line up a bunch of iPhones and say, okay, this was a natural progress and it just happened by chance. Anyone in the room, a student, any, any kid will say, yeah. they will laugh, yeah. right? And then you use the same theory of how they present evolution and say, well, do you believe this then? They're all gonna say no. 
Exactly. Now let's go. There's a creator. There's intelligence. There's purpose, and that is where you go back to. Uh, yes, exactly. Because the reason that you know uh, my emphasis here is the will. There is an uh, intent behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, there is knowledge, high level of knowledge. There is a skill set and power. So there must be an entity behind the scenes. Just like I have no idea, you know, uh, who designed uh, this iPhone. But I know that behind this, there is an army of engineers. The, uh, I think uh, what, uh, software writers, kind of you know, putting everything uh, together. If, let's say, you deny it and try to explain an iPhone, OK? No way. Uh, no way. Again, the needle example. Okay. If let's say a needle cannot be done, okay, uh, I don't think uh, the rest of it uh, will be uh, what, a question there. Um, Salam alaikum. Just wanted to, before we move on from yeah. that point, um, um, he was saying something about um, uh, because of his skills, knowledge, purpose, and all that uh, shows a designer at the, at the end. Uh, many of the arguments evolution is come up with today is yes, we agree there's knowledge. We agree there's purpose, we agree everything, but it's not God, it's an alien, an intelligent being from elsewhere, but don't just call it God. We're not saying there's no creator behind it, but it's not God. It's probably an intelligent being in, in outer space. Mm. How do you counter that? But that's the argument now no, they use. I would, I would, you know, uh, what I would agree with that, saying yeah. that, uh, tell me the properties of that you're an intelligent alien, okay? <laughs> and probably be the properties or the uh, ESMA of uh, God, and uh, you can say that, you know, yeah. that entity that you have, okay, with the ability, you know, to will and impose its will and uh, with the knowledge, that infinite knowledge and the infinite power or whatever, okay, whatever you call it, uh, we call it, you know, God, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, maybe, you know, find some, uh, what, <laughs> terminology thing there. Mm. Um, I think it's a very important point, I think, was mentioned before that, that the process of evolution, we don't need to go against. It's a process procedure that happens. Now, who created it? How does it come into place? All of that now becomes not a science question, becomes worldview question. And so when, when a teacher and university professor tells the kids, science is a, f uh, you know, evolution is a fact, everything else is, uh, you know, fairy tales, right? We're like, okay, what are you talking about? The process? The process is a fact, but who put that process in place? Who uh, brought it into place? If you're saying it's by itself, then that's your view. That's not science. Exactly. So don't tell me that's science. Exactly. That's where we need to use rationality to say if it's you know, God or, or not God. But it's not science. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. we mix science that mm -hmm. we get ideology, you know, yes. and present it as part of science. Right. So that is the uh, uh, problem. Now, otherwise, uh, part of, I think, uh, uh, that's the, the uh, evolutionary biology, mm -hmm. okay, they are observations. Mm -hmm. Less, uh, obviously, there is you know, some similarity, mm -hmm. and there are a certain percentage of genes, sometimes above 90%, mm -hmm. of monkeys, human beings are the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, fact, mm -hmm. scientific fact, for example, mm -hmm. uh, okay, but it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that one species goes to the higher one by chance. And the argument here is it cannot happen. And forget that even a single cell, a you know, single cell, which is the smallest living being, with about trillions of molecules working together in harmony. Laws and forces of physics cannot do that. So even a single cell, forget the rest. Okay. Uh, uh, so maybe Rajam, here comes the the division, sharp division between the science and the philosophy of science. Can I just is different than the sorry, the commands? Sorry, commands and the philosophy behind the science. In the moment you put a sentence and a command, it's a philosophy about the science. It's not the science itself. So there's a very sharp division, and there are even so many articles in Western academia, you know, doing that that division very fairly. Uh, yeah. Because let's say in a scientific theory, like let's say Big Bang, uh, you know, it looks logical and nothing really to object there. It may not be the true picture of what happened, but you know, good enough. It explains the expansion or whatever. Uh, and uh, people, you know, have no problem. But let's say if you say the theory of evolution, it is like, do you believe in evolution? Okay? And you ask people, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, do you believe in God or evolution? Something like that. Okay, who is this evolution? A magician or something? Okay? Uh, I would like to meet that guy, right? Uh, and uh, 
uh, when they say uh, we have questions of that kind, people say, for example, 50% believe in evolution. Science, I think, uh, if it is a true science, let's say gravity. How many people uh, believe in gravity? 100%, right? Mm -hmm. If you deny it, you know, <laughs> no one will care about your denial there. But if, let's say, 50%, 60% agree, disagree with it, yeah, obviously, uh, obviously, it is not, you know, uh, a science then, it is something else. So yeah, even in their term... Disagreement. So, yeah, like, even in their terminology, that sharp illusion, you know, appears, because they are, they don't ask, like, as you said, do you believe in gravity, but do you accept gravity? It's not, the, it's not something to be believed in, to be accepted. Mm -hmm. But philosophers of science are like that, so that's why they're asking, do you believe in science? Ah, uh, yeah, because it is not, yeah, it is not really science. It is, uh, okay, there are certain things, yeah, events, which are, you know, science, factual, observable, and then what you build on it, as an ideology, okay, it is philosophy. Mm. And I think uh, it shouldn't be presented as science. That is, the, that is you know, fine as I you know, your view, but shouldn't be presented as a science. Okay. So I just wanted to add, there's another issue with evolution. So one of the issues is that people say, oh, do you believe in evolution or do you don't? So one of the issues is when you say, no, I don't believe in it, then they think you're backwards. But one of the issues with evolution in particular is that actually there's microevolution and there's macroevolution. So microevolution is, you know, it's been observed, no problems, there's no questions about it. We all see it on a regular basis in our life. But macroevolution, there's actually no observable evidence of it because you can't observe it. So they bring things like saying, oh, look at the similarities between this. We've discovered this. But they're basically, that's a hypothesis built on this is what it is, right? But there's actually no observable evidence for macroevolution. So uh, this is the issue now. A lot of people, I find that with the youth or in general, they'll say, um, you know, if I say I don't believe in evolution, I look like I'm backwards. But the reality is that they've lumped evolution together, macro and micro. So macroevolution, by the way, just to explain it, is where species jumps to another, another species, okay? And there's no evidence. Like, we don't even see, let's say today, transitional forms, we say. So transitional forms are where we'll see something like a cat that's half cat, half dog. We don't see this, right? So where is the evidence? So I'm just wanting to, what I'm trying to say is that one of the issues is that we've accepted evolution, that it's factual, but it's actually not. Like, is it everybody kind of getting what I'm at, right? So micro, we all see it. We have children, they look a little bit different. There's some, some micro changes. We see the, you know, the insects, they change, they, they migrate, et cetera, et cetera. But in actuality, we have no observable evidence of macroevolution and it's pretty easy to argue because when you tell somebody do you see let's say a fish with you know that's got half a leg or even the concept of um, you know the idea in evolution is that for instance uh, something that is useful starts to be well it'll continue furthering right so in order for an eyeball for instance to start forming it's actually not useful in the beginning it's just flesh right so in order for it to continue evolving to come become something better is actually not a correct um, understanding. Does that make any sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I think too, like for instance, when I, when I work with kids or with youth, et cetera, I start to separate this. We don't just say theory of evolution. Yeah, they kind of throw it all together. But the reality is that, no, 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 hold on a second. We have no problem with microevolution. Very clear. Macro, where's your evidence? Oh, probably happened over billions of years. What is your probably? Where is that? Right? How did a deer, like one of my arguments is people start to make fun about, um, you know, they'll, they'll mock, let's say, oh, the Borak, the flu, right? I'm like, well, you explain to me how a deer jumped into the ocean and became a whale. Because that's the theory they have in place right now. Does that make any sense? If a deer jumps into the ocean today, what will happen? They start to laugh. But this is actually what's happening, and they make it sound factual, and it's all in the way that it's written, which is where I think we're going to get to eventually. Sorry for talking. Yeah. I think the most important part is mm -hmm. we as educators have to kind of decouple, right? Yeah. This whole thing of they've coupled science with evolution and made it look as one. And our jobs, I think, the first proper thing is to decouple that. Exactly. Right? That's the most important. Severe that relationship, then you got them on a playing field. Yeah. Then there's, they have no room after that. You go after the mic, like she mentioned, go after that theory. Yeah. Right? Exactly. That is where they, they get it, right? Because anytime they, it's like they don't have an answer, they'll go back to you know, Mother Nature or evolution, right? It's a, it's a hiding spot, and that's where we have to identify that weakness, decouple it from that point onwards, and then, then the discussion goes a very different way. 
especially when it comes to kids. It is, you know, the science and philosophy. Let's separate them. Yeah. Yes. Just the like science and the theory part has to be decoupled. Uh, yeah. It's even worse like, than that. Like, like, you know, the Einstein, you know, that, you know, uh, watch example. Okay, the face, the numbers, and then the thick sounds or whatever. We all agree. No problem there. But uh, for the invisible part, okay, <laughs> yeah, where is the evidence, right, <laughs> for that one, uh, to uh, support your model? Uh, it, it's even worse than that. I mean, um, uh, secular scientists are actually saying that religion stands in the way of science. So it's not even that, you know, um, uh, that there's uh, evolution and, and there's the science. No, no, they're going even beyond that and saying that actually, and, and I've attended, and this was like in 2005, like a big conference, and, and, and we had one speaker that came and talked about, you know, secular science and the need for secular science and, and so forth. And, and his argument was the fact that, look, religion is breaking everything. It's making everything bad. It stands in the face of science. And, you know, and, and this, this essence on its own is a big problem. So we're not just saying that the universe actually built itself, it made itself, or you know, it came from evolution or from whatever. You're saying also that religion not only is not part of that, it actually is against that. So, and, and I had a really heated conversation that day with the, <laughs> with the, with the presenter. Let me add to that, yeah. to that uh, it's actually because we, do, we judge right away evolution, and we are against evolution, period. You see, every Muslim, he said, no evolution, it's not Islamic. Mm -hmm. But as Sister Susan said, like it's micro and ma macro. So it's actually the one that even the Western society, like I have lots of, I watch lots of mm -hmm. lectures about against the micro, like uh, the, the, the deer goes into uh, uh, the, uh, the water and become a whale. That's like, I don't even know who agree on that evolution now these days. Mm -hmm. So we are as Muslims, we need really to, as, as uh, Sir Samah said, we need to educate ourselves and show our points and be able to be with the, so with the science society so we don't have this negative yeah. perspective about Muslims being against evolution or against science in general. So it's yeah. really it's like something like that that educate uh, yeah. educators to educate other people to be able to yeah. be and, on the right track. And, and again, Islam is not, is not against science. And you know, one of the points that I said was, it, it's you know, there's so many, um, so many signs of science in, in the Book of Islam, and yeah. you know, I directed the professor to some of the books that you know he could read into. But you know, the essence that they wanna not only do that, but also not only separate um, Islam or, or religions from science, but also look at it as the devil that tries to attack science and the existence of science. Yeah, I think if I say, I think. Mean, the collective idea here is that uh, if let's say we make things clear, Kando, you know, Kando, you know, give to Caesars what you know Caesar says, right? That is, there is science, observable, testable, whatever all of us see. Kando, you know, put it aside. Hey, this is you know science. We all agree with this. And then other things that you know you build on top of it out of nowhere. Okay. So you know, let's Kando kind of re-examine that. Uh, discuss it on the basis you know logic, reason, you know uh, whatever. Uh, and uh, if let's say we separate this, uh, probably uh, we can uh, what? Ah, <laughs> uh, probably you know we can uh, get somewhere. But if that's automatically, I am anti-evolution or anti-something. It's like you are anti-science because it comes under the cover of science. Unfortunately, yep. uh, the, why, the, what is the reason? Because uh, most scientists probably are. Let's say ideologically, they, they are not believers, and they want, let's say, ways to somehow make the causes uh, like the uh, makers mm -hmm. with knowledge, you know, will, power, and uh, everything. Mm, yeah. yeah, I just want to um, just make one point here that, uh, inshallah, the session that Professor Najati is going to do later on and the one he's going to do tomorrow is going to give a, a baseline from which we can approach science. Because it's not about saying we don't agree with this or we don't agree with that. Because if you go down that path, you will never basically reach any conclusion. But if you understand the concept of cause, which um, is discussed uh, by Sayyid Nursi in uh, a lot of detail with many different arguments that he gives, if you can get that concept and understand why attributing anything to a cause, any type of cause, is um, the incorrect way to approach it, mm. 
when you can understand that, that is the key argument. Mm -hmm. It's not about uh, saying, talking about any specific uh, phenomena mm -hmm. and trying to refute it, because mm -hmm. that is just a cyclic discussion that happens. Mm -hmm. So inshallah, what I think this discussion is really great, alhamdulillah, but what I would like is for everyone to see this as the first step in the discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is the first step. There is uh, a few other things that we have to unpeel mm -hmm. and conclude why the concept of cause is not a real, mm -hmm. uh, is, not, is not the cause of uh, the creation that we see. Okay, but uh, at the same time, I think uh, we should really recognize uh, the cause-effect relations uh, to science. That is, they are there, we agree with it, and then uh, we should, let's say, give the effect, the real effect, what is behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the invisible hand, uh, with, I think, the intent and the knowledge and the power there. Yeah. And actually, all we are already agreed upon, you know, mm -hmm. Islam is not contradictory with science, of course, yeah. you know. Actually, as Uzma said, you know, the, the contributions, uh, inshallah, uh, should be more about, like, you know, the, the divisions maybe, uh, or maybe kind of the theories and also the solutions, and then the practical level in the, in the following days, how we can apply them in our schools as well, so to be able to learn uh, more from the concepts. Okay, let me just show two more slides, then I'll finish because we are out of time. Okay. okay. Someone was saying something? I was just saying that when she said that, you know, the, you know, today the claiming that religion is against science, the notion comes from a very Christian background. That you look at that, that's what it is. Ours is completely different, actually. Our sciences came from Islam. I mean, you look at all the, you know, the, the so-called dark ages, when the Islamic tradition was actually, uh, it came from the sciences. I mean, you look at everything. Right? So it, I think it's a very good opportunity to actually point the person and say, okay, maybe your background is coming from a very Christian, Judeo-Christian. But if you look at this and study this, mm -hmm. it would it would give you a very different result. If you, I think that's. Okay, two more slides, then uh, this and uh, the next one, and I'll uh, end. Uh, often also, what they say is science explain this. So you know what? What else is there? Okay, science can explain this. Uh, let's say the kidney. Okay, yeah, science explains. You know what happens there, all the details, whatever. So they think you know it is resolved. I don't need anything behind yet. Uh, let's say look at this dialysis machine here. It does the same thing. Okay. Yes, we can explain it. You know exactly what happens there. But the problem is behind that dialysis machine. Again, there are a lot of engineers, a lot of scientists. Uh, they have the intention, the goal of building something that achieves that, and then they have the knowledge, they have the skill and the power to do it. Uh, if, let's say, you say, oh, I can explain this dialysis machine, so you know, why do I need you know, engineers involve them or whatever, okay? It is you know, nonsense, right? So I think the same uh, nonsense, I think, uh, applies here. And right now, let's say, they use the knowledge is a knowledgeable agent, okay? That, you know, knowledge is everything. Because they know that the laws and force of physics are really nothing. They can't, you know, I realize that. So right now, knowledge, if you look at the recent uh, books there. But let me uh, just say that, <clears throat> let's say a recipe in a cookbook, okay? Uh, written instructions on how to make a certain dish from the ingredients in a kitchen, okay? Information is there. And they say information is everything. They say DNA is inform information does it. Now, how logical is it to think that a cookbook, uh, which is a pile of blind and ignorant letters, reads this recipe, understands it, picks the right ingredients, processes them per instructions, and cooks the indicated dish like a grand chef? Any, there is no relation. That is a recipe, okay, fixing a meal. Yet we do the same, let's say, with DNA, right? Uh, in the DNA, a gene there. Again, written instructions on how to make a certain protein from the amino acids in a cell. Now, how logical is it to think that a DNA molecule or a, or a cell itself, again, what is a cell, okay, uh, question mark there, uh, which is a pile of blind and ignorant atoms, reads the gene, understands it, picks up the right amino acids, synthesizes them per instructions into the intended, intended protein like a skillful chemist. Yet, we always do it in the biology, right? Uh, like, you know, uh, that information is there, so what else is to know there? Uh, see, so what I, I try to show here, of course, I, I'll stop here, uh, to show here that uh, there are a lot of things, invisible things, that, you know, we don't involve, but real power is here behind those, those things, uh, and we will have to be able to articulate uh, them. 
And I think that these are very simple, logical uh, things uh, that I think uh, can be used in uh, better understanding science and putting it uh, uh, on a meaningful uh, platform or background there. So I will stop here. And, uh, I think uh, Nejati will share the presentation with you. You can you know, use this in your classes and the rest of the slides there. So I thank you. Thank you very much for your... Thank you.